And I'll just uh, point at you when we're ready to move on to the next slide. All right, great. So how's everybody? We don't have a lot of people dressing up for Halloween this year. Are they allowed? Are you guys allowed to dress up? Yeah, yeah dress they up. Look at you. So I'll start the presentation. You guys are seniors or juniors? What, are you, what is this, mostly? Sophomores? It's mostly seniors. Mostly seniors. OK, so you guys are graduating this year, and you guys are going to college, which is great. It's a big deal. Um, I'm going to give a little story and analogy about what it's like to transition from high school to college. And it starts off with a tree growing by a fence. So we have these two trees. We have, which one? That's Stumpy, and that's Bark. Okay, so we have Stumpy and Bark, these two trees. They're best friends, they went to high school together, they grew up together, and they went through the fence of life. They went through adversities, they went through tests, they went through games, you know, athletics. So they grew together the fence, and they finally graduated from high school, these two trees. They're very happy, they're ready to move on to the next portion of their lives. They're very strong, right? So what happened? We have two, two types. We have Bark here, went to college, and he said, finally, I'm in college. I already got past the hard part, which is high school, and I'm just going to relax. I'm going to calm down and just get to know myself and go party, have some fun, but still not maintain the level of discipline I had in high school. And then we have Stumpy here. He looks like Stumpy. That's why I always, because he has a stump face. So Stumpy here decided to take his productivity to the next level, decided, okay, just because I'm in college doesn't mean it's over. It's just step one. Went to college, did more, exceeded more, more activities, more athletics, more games and clubs and projects and essays. And after a while, we had two types of two types of trees. We had one tree, they both went through the same fence, grew up in high school together, but one grew tall and strong, the other did not. Now, this is very simple, obvious, you want to make sure they discipline throughout life. The one thing that I want to communicate to you guys is majority of you are in the 16 to 18 year, range, 18 year old range. A lot of your brains and our brains haven't developed yet. Your brains are still developing. And right now, in these college years, that is where the growth of development is most critical for your future and your adult life. So, the main principle here is that your brain is a tree. Is a tree. You guys know Elon Musk saying we have a simulation, the brain is a computer, right? The brain is a tree. Its principles operate more like a tree than it does a computer because the brain grows, it adapts, it changes, and then on top of that, it processes information, okay? But its structure is malleable. Its structure can change and move and flow and grow like a tree. So this is one of the laws of physics, it's something called a constructional law, which is how you flow, how you grow is based on how you flow. Okay, so if you have a tree, and a tree is growing around a fence, it's gonna move in and out of the fence, right? Now, if you have a brain, the brain is flowing through time. It's flowing through your mind. And you have to develop your mind to make sure that the fence is growing through, is strong, and make sure it's held up for a long, long time. Okay? You can go to the next one. So this is the first principle. We're gonna take a, like a mini quiz at the end of this. It's a fun quiz, but maybe you can do some bonus points or something, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good. But the first principle is that our brains are trees. Okay, they have a lot of similarities to a tree. All right, who here has heard of neuroplasticity? <coughs> look, look, awesome, cool. So, Neuroplasticity is important. Tell me what neuroplasticity is. I've heard of it. I thought it Oh, uh, okay. Do you know what it is? We learned it a while ago in AP Psych. Okay. So neuroplasticity is that the brain can change. Literally, like the brain, the thing that you can touch, can move. It's moving inside of you. 
Okay, like a tree, like the winds of the tree. Neuroplasticity that the brain can change. And you guys are the next one. So how does it change? All right, there's so many ways. In my company, we do all types of work in modifying the brain and guiding the brain with these electrical stimuli. Many ways in which the brain can change. This is important for business. It's important for leadership. If you want to go to the next slide. The most important one I want to talk about is something called map expansion. So map expansion is the most intuitive neuroplasticity phenomenon. So if you have a brain here, right? And you have a region of the brain right there, right? Let's say this region is for financial decision making. It helps you guide financial choices and analyze different risk profiles to make an investment, okay? That's what this region of the brain does. Over time, as you continue to strengthen that like a muscle, the region will grow, expand its map, and become a central node inside the brain. Okay? Why is this important? Who can tell me why this is important? Why do you guys think this is important if you want to get into the business field or investing field? Halloween. Oh, Halloween would be excited. Who wants to take a crack at it? So the reason why this is important is because if you have a large node in the brain that controls financial decision making, you'll see that all the other regions of your brain is going to revolve around that central area. Okay, so it's kind of gravitate towards it, essentially. All right. So good. Does this make sense so far? Everything's great. I like this. So how does the brain grow? Okay, we have these brains, they grow like a tree. How do trees grow? I mean, I know you guys are thinking, well, a tree just grows up and, you know, branches. But on a physics level, how does the trees grow? They grow along these S curves. So you guys see these curves, they go up and then stabilize up and then stabilize, and then up and then stabilize again. This is how the brain grows. Right now, as you guys are in high school, you guys are on, let's say, the first curve of your life here. And you guys are about to enter a part where your brain sort of kind of settles and gets used to your habits. But then it's up to you to develop the next curve, okay? Some people stabilize their brain here and they don't do much, and the brain just stays there for the rest of their life. Some people are proactive and say, all right, I know my brain is growing right now. I'm gonna try my best to get it all the way up there, okay? And so when they try hard to get it all the way up there, it stays there, okay? It plateaus there, all right? This is very, very important. Who here wants to get into business? I feel like, is this, everyone wants to get into business here in some sort of way in college and after? All right, so when you guys get into business, you're gonna have tons of projects, project management, financial decision making, human resources, you guys, most of you guys, I think you guys are gonna excel, you're gonna start off as interns, okay? Interns into a place of business, and then it's about developing your habits and exceeding your own expectation to stabilize yourself into higher, higher areas of business, all right? It's about developing your brain and expanding your brain and the decision makings in your brain to have it plateau at a high level of understanding, okay? When you're used to waking up every day, jogging at 5 a.m., that's just gonna be your normal, right? If you're used to waking up each morning and reading the stock market and picking up investment advice and making investing decisions, that's gonna be your normal, all right? The people who exceed in business are the ones that push their plateaus on and on and on, okay? All right. And this makes sense, all right? When you first start off, you're gonna have the business that you work in, their boss is going to give you some sort of project, okay? And you have two choices, either A, have your life be 
okay, I'm just gonna do what boss tells me to do, or B, you exceed expectations and promote yourself and your level of thinking and develop a team around the project and be a manager, right? And then you have that next level where not only is it your project, but it's the project of the entire company and you are guiding their future, okay? Some people, which is fine, but some people just stay here for the rest of their lives. Maybe they like that, maybe they want that, maybe they just want a family. Then some people push themselves and take themselves to the next level in the mind and get on these higher curves. Once you reach these higher curves, you usually stay operating there. Does that make sense? So, these are different ways to analyze the brain. Okay, so these are called connectivity graphs, all right? So from a neuroscience level, what does it mean to have a boss's project or a team project? I'm the leader of the team. I'm guiding the team towards a healthy future. What is the difference between those? And so the difference between those is that when you exceed your own expectations, the level of connectivity inside your brain, the level in which your brain is making connections with itself, increases exponentially, all right? I believe you guys are gonna to get to leadership management training, right? Yeah, pretty, yeah. Okay, so something very important, this is what we do at our company, and what we train our managers and train our leaders to do, is to look at the brains of our team, the teammates around them, and we develop their S-curves, all right? So we look at their brain and we say, all right, we know what your brain is going to be like in one year, we know what your brain is going to be like in five years, all right? you're going to grow their brain such that they can reach that higher plateau. As a leader, you're developing the S-curves for your team, okay? You're developing their minds. You're saying, you have an employee come in and say, I don't think I can do this, I, this project is too hard. Uh, I don't know anything about this, learning is gonna take a lot of time. You, as the leader of the company, you as the leader of the project, leader of the team, you're gonna develop their thinking model to say, absolutely you can. I can show you how to do it. I can show you how to develop those habits. I can show you how to develop those disciplines and grow their brain into the next S-curve until one, one day, six months later, they say, oh yeah, I can do this, this is easy, thank you, right? You're developing their brains. As a leader, you develop the brains of the people around you. Good? Good? Okay, let's move on to the next part. So cognitive biases, have you guys heard of this? Okay, so cognitive biases, there's many different types of cognitive biases and when it comes to business and financial decision making and investing, so many investors and managers and financial advisors, they fall into these cognitive biases. So I'm going to be here to tell you what are these cognitive biases and how to not fall into them, all right? So the first one's called confirmation bias. So confirmation bias is you find what you look for. This is confirmation bias, all right? So let's do it, let's play a game right now. I want you to take the next 10 seconds, look around the room and count how many objects are green. How many green objects, okay? So let's take the next 10 seconds, ready, go. Okay, I'm gonna get two answers. Let's get three answers. What, how many did you think? How many did you catch? How many of them? I saw five. You saw five? 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 Oh, you already got five. Which five is it this? What are the five here? I got one, two, three. I got your shorts over there. You got some pants, green pants, four. What's the fifth one? Oh, the nice, great, great. Oh, six, all right. Okay, cool. How many orange objects did you see? You didn't even count. Did you count? Did you count how many? Why didn't you count? Because you weren't looking for it. 
You're looking for something else. You're looking for green. So when you look for green, you know everything about the green. I'm analyzing it. I know everything about it. But you completely miss the orange because you didn't look for it. That's confirmation bias. All right? When you hone in on something and don't look at something else, you're not going to know that something else. Okay? We'll speak more about this later. I want to get to the other ones. Loss aversion. I would rather do nothing than do something bad. Hmm. Who am I going to choose? I'm going to choose you because you were, you were late, but I'm going to work with you, okay? So, would you rather A, give me $5 and I possibly give you back 20 later, or B, nothing and you don't, you don't lose any money? You say what? $5. Okay, you do the $5. All right. Well, let me tell you something. Well, maybe you're in the investment class. A lot of people would not make that decision that you made. A lot of people would choose the do nothing approach. All right? Because it's safer. You don't want to lose five bucks. You don't want to possibly lose five bucks. I'd rather do nothing. When we work with a lot of investors and we work with a lot of people who allocate capital for our company, what ends up happening is that they choose projects with lowest risk. Okay? I'm going to choose a project that will definitely, definitely, definitely not lose money. Okay? And they don't really choose the projects that may make a lot or may lose a lot. All right? And when they don't choose the second, overall, the company actually loses money because our company is based upon taking those strategic risks, knowing that we have a chance to lose, but know we have a chance to gain a lot. This is loss aversion. Loss aversion is, all right, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm gonna stay quiet, stay timid, and I'll be safe. If you step out of this cognitive bias and step into, all right, let me take a chance, I'm gonna go walk in the jungle and see what's happening, I'm gonna gain some things, you may have a lot of benefit, all right? <clears throat> Oh gosh. So, <laughs> so base rate neglect, this is another bias. You won't be quizzed on all these different words, but just listen and absorb it into your brain, okay? <coughs> so base rate neglect is just, we focus on emotional information rather than quantitative information, okay? What does this mean? So let's think about COVID. COVID, there are many people in the world who say, oh my gosh, you're gonna get the COVID vaccine, and I'm gonna get a, the COVID vaccine is gonna be tracking my brain, it's gonna get the microchip in my brain, and the COVID vaccine is bad for you, it's gonna kill you, okay? And then what ends up happening is that we can present these people tons of articles, tons of scientific information, tons of big, big, big books on the vaccine, the science of it, and it stays still, they don't budge. They don't budge at all. All right, they're stubborn on the emotional information. In fact, in our company, this this is something that happens, which is they look at our company and they say, "Oh my God, this is a brain controlling device. You're going to control my brain. You're going to control my mind. You're going to read my thoughts. You're going to put thoughts into my brain." And we're kind of like, "What? This is a device for Parkinson's disease." Okay, but they're so hung up on the emotional information that even when we present them all the articles and research and trials that we did, they're like, I'm not listening to it. In the financial world, it's similar, all right? You may have an emotional calling to invest in the medical field or invest in the mm, Twitter, social media with Elon Musk, and even when all the information says, no, no, you're gonna lose on this stock, this stock is not going to go up, the emotional heart says, Okay, so it's about developing the model in your brain to operate with emotions and thinking to make the perfect decision. Does that make sense? All right, last one. Oh, this is a really funny one. Um, <laughs> this is why I wanted the green apple. So I didn't have a green apple, I wanted a red apple. So let's pretend I have the green apple. All right, let's pretend I have the green apple in the head. I've seen 
this is what the brain does. The brain literally does this, okay? So, let's pretend I have a green apple in my hand, and I look at the green apple for the first time and say, in my brain, and say, oh my gosh, all apples are green. This is the first apple I've ever seen, it's a green apple. All apples are green, right? Cool? And I look at the red apple. You know what my brain is gonna say? What do you think my brain is gonna say? It's not an apple. It, what? It's not an apple. It's not an apple? Yeah. No. no. Apples are green. They're good! Uh, you're, that's, that's such an intuitive answer. That's a good answer uh, on a deep level, but I'm gonna say a different answer, okay? Really good. You, you got the point though. So if my brain's actually gonna say, when I look at this, I'm gonna say, 95% mm, of apples are green. Okay, because this was the first apple I've ever seen, and this is the second, I'm gonna lean on the first, first apple here, all right? Even though it's technically 50%, 50-50, right? Our brains will say, no, it's 95-5. So, when our brains have these beliefs of how certain things are, it's very hard to change them, even if they have the equal amount of information coming in. Goes back to financial investing, right? Goes back to the previous bias before, which is even though we have these beliefs and these notions about this Twitter stock is gonna be incredible, right? And you presented books and books and books of information in front of you about why the Twitter stock is not gonna be incredible, it will take you a long time for it to really be absorbed into your thinking, okay? This is a phenomenon called iterative Bayesian unfolding. I'm not worried about you guys knowing what those words are. I want you guys to understand the concept. If you can click to the next slide. So I'm gonna give you a more relaxed example of iterative Bayesian unfolding, all right? So let's say when you're 12 years old, I know this is not everybody, everybody here, but let's put a general thing. When you're 12 years old, and you look at the plate of vegetables, what, what does your brain go? Ugh, ugh, vegetable. Maybe not, but let's just pretend that's where they go. And then when you go older, you're 18, you look at vegetables like, oh, you know, I like vegetables, it helps health in your body. And then when you get a lot older, you look at vegetables, you're super excited. I love vegetables. Vegetables are great for my heart. They're great for my brain, great for my stomach, kidney, organ functions, right? Got a lot of these vitamins. You're looking at the same plate of vegetables in your mind, and you have three different reactions. So if I close my eyes right now, and I think about how I, ew, I really didn't like vegetables when I was 12 years old. And then I open my eyes and I say, oh, that I was a young, young, adult, young individual, now I love vegetables, I can't wait to eat vegetables. What happens is I change my belief on an event that occurred, what, 12 years ago for me, okay? So inside your minds, inside all of your brains, you guys are changing how you see your memories as you grow older. So let's say you failed a test one time bad test, you failed the test, okay? And you look at it right now, you say, oh, I'm a failure, I'm not going to succeed in life, I'm a fail, fail person, fail the test. With the right information, you can look at that same exact memory, the same exact one inside your brain and say, oh, I needed to learn more. I am a smart individual, all I needed to do was study and prepare a little bit better. Okay, I'm not a failure, I am a success. It's the same brain, it's the same mind, it's the same memory, two different thoughts on top of the memory. Does that make sense? That's Bayesian unfolding. Because the more you grow older, the more you see your memories differently. So, this is the latest understanding of the brain. Latest understanding of the brain goes like this, which is that our brains change themselves both forward and backwards in time, okay? The models of our identity exist 
in previous space and time and exist in future space and time, all right? And I'm changing my brain six years from now and I'm changing my brain six years ago. I'm interacting with the Mo six years from now and the Mo six years ago, okay? Now, there are many ways to think about this topic. What I tried and what I did to lay out for you guys is an intuitive way to put it inside your brain, just a simple way. So think of it as these growing sets. Remember, you guys know the nested Russian dolls? Think of that as what's happening in your brain. You have these nested sets of identity inside your brain, okay? You have a lower self, that reptilian self. You guys know about the reptilian portion of the brain, right? You guys heard of that? The punk, the, the self, the animalistic self, the animalistic version of the brain, and before the brain goes up, 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 up more, becomes a more higher cognitive version of the brain, right? We have our monkey brain, right? The monkey brain, and then we have the human brain, right? Does that make sense now? So you have the monkey brain down here, and the human brain, the very smart human brain up there grows up, right? So that's what's happening with our identities too. Our identities are built on these sets. These are the smaller monkey brain sets. I'm gonna fail this test. I hate vegetables. Ah, something, 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 right? And then we grow, and then we have these larger sets, and then we say, oh, I love vegetables. Vegetables are great for my body, they're great for my health. Great vitamins, great nutrients. Oh, that test, oh, I should have prepared better. That test taught me how to be more disciplined and how to exceed in life, okay? When you're working with a team, when you're working with a team, or you're interacting with your friends, interacting with your colleagues, understand that their identities and their brains lie in all points in time, okay? Go back to the S-curve example. Can you guys relate it back to the S-curve? Who can relate it back to the S-curve? When I'm looking at an employee and the employee says, I can't do it. This is going to be a hard test, a hard project, hard blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking at their brain and I say, ah, if I guide your brain right, you know, in four years or in four months, I can get you to say those words differently. And I guide their brain and I say, and they look back and they say, oh, that project wasn't hard. I just needed to be more disciplined and learn and work outside for outside of work hours for a little bit to get myself into the right position. Okay? So when you look at an individual, talk to your friends, you realize and understand that their identities live in all points in time. Okay? You're talking to the future version of themselves. You're talking to the past, what's your name? Rena, you're talking to the future Rena, the past Rena, okay? Does this make sense? This is important for leadership development, okay? When you have a team and you see their, their identities and you see their brains, you know that you're not just talking to them now, you're talking to the version of themselves five years from now talking to Rena five years from now, okay? And I'm building that Rena, I'm guiding that Rena. And that Rena is then guiding herself. Does this make sense? All right. So these are the three main points I would like for you to take with you, all right? We have a lot of information, a lot of exciting work here. The three main points are, number one, actually, let's read it together. Number one, our <laughs> number one, our, our brains are trees. trees. That's great. Number two, leaders, leaders develop teams on S curves. Three, identity models exist at all points in time. Great. 
Good? All right. I want everybody to go on to the next slide. Everybody go on their cell phone. You can go on your cell phone and do this. Go to youthemind.com and then go to the educational outreach page or just outreach. I'm not sure. Yeah, educational outreach. And then click on leadership survey. And then take that, take that little, that little quiz. But it's for you, all right? Hi, yeah. What, what was the website again? You the mind. You the you the mind. Dot com. Leadership survey, yeah. 